Hi and welcome to another Freelance Fridge video tutorial. This one I'm going to go ahead and cover how to render out a nice image of your figurine, whether that's used for packaging or marketing or whatever else you might need it for. Um, once you're done with your figurine, you've got this red clay sculpt, but you want to promote this thing or you want to have a, a nice image that can be used on packaging or social media or whatever else is necessary for the company you're working for or for yourself. And so here's how you go about that. Your character's already merged, already done, already decimated, all of that stuff. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to change the material to toy plastic. Fancy that. And I'm going to go up here to color. I'm just going to make it completely white. Like so. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a plane, 3D plane. I'm going to click on that plane, go over to deformation, scale it up a bunch, and then when I flip it around you'll see that this is this plane's here but it's backwards. So we're going to flip that around rotate it 180 should do the trick. Then we're going to make it a little bit larger And then I'm actually going to zoom out here and scale it across the x-axis a little bit more. You're probably like, what the heck? What's, what's the use of that? What we're using this for, as I move this into place using offset here, is this is going to be like a wall behind the figure. And then I'm going to create the ground as well. So I'm just kind of getting this in place. You want it behind your figure, but not like super close to your figure. You can give it some breathing room. And then I'm going to just go back up to Subtool, duplicate this, and then just rotate it into place. 90 degrees. Well, I have to do... I guess I can do that and then do it 180. There we go. Now it's in place. And then all I have to do is zoom in a little bit here so I can kind of see the feet. And then I'm going to move this up until it's just barely touching or just below the feet. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now at this point, I have to light this scene. The reason for the background is so that when you're creating the light, it has something to bounce around and create a more realistic light on your figure. I'm actually going to make these a little bit bigger uh, still as far as width. All right, that feels about good for a scene. And it doesn't really matter right now if your character is facing forward or sideways. We'll get to that in a moment. So um, you can do this a couple different ways, but I usually start this way since I've already got a lighting setup that I like. I kind of get my character centered and then if I zoom out a second, you can see this gray box. This is kind of your viewing area. You're going to want to scale your character up to be as large as possible within that inner gray box. Essentially getting rid of all the dark gray around the outside. It doesn't really matter too much if he's totally centered, but obviously it's kind of nice if he is.
this takes a little bit of time to kind of zoom in and remember you're still using that dark gray area to, to zoom in all the way once you have them kind of in place oh, I let go of control too quickly alright once he's kind of in place and you feel pretty good about the size he is on screen then you can click alt and click on your figure itself so he's selected and then you can just use the rotate uh, under deformation to kind of rotate him into a position that shows off his figure the best possible. So for me, since he's got this tail, I want to kind of rotate him in a place where I can see a bit of that tail and I can identify what it is. So maybe about... about about here. So that's kind of the preview of what my render is going to be. It's going to be this position of this character at this size of on the screen. So now that I have it how I like it, I'm going to go under light and um, either create a light cap or open one. I have one saved, uh, so I'm going to open that light cap. This is the probably the most challenging aspect of the entire rendering process, is creating a diffused light cap scenario that feels like natural light or feels like a realistic light. This took me quite some time to set up, so some secrets are going to be left secret. But essentially, each one of these dots is a different point of light, and then there's different um, apertures and fall-offs and strengths for those particular things, colors and such. And you set those all up for each one of these points, and, and then it creates a more realistic light. And then once you have it how you like it, you can save it and reuse it in the future. Um, the best way I can describe creating this is to try to come up with some natural light scenario, whether indoors or outdoors, using um, a plastic ball to kind of mimic this and then start trying to recreate the lighting of that plastic ball until you have it pretty close. That's how I set it up. Um, but once you have your light cap in, you don't really need the light of the scene on, so I turn that off. And then, at this point, we're going into the render settings to adjust a few things in there. So I'm going to click on Render Properties. I'm going to make sure Ambient Occlusion and SSS are on. And then I'm going to go under BPR Shadow, and I'm going to adjust some of these settings. Now these settings are also something that took me some time to kind of get it how I liked it. So for my particular lighting, 0.745 for the strength, 14 for the rays, 117.55 for the angle, and 14 for the blur. That works pretty well for me. And then at this point, that's all you really need to do is mess with a couple of those render settings and the light itself. And then you're ready to try rendering out this scene. And all you have to do to render the scene is to press this BPR button here. And it does take just a couple moments here to render it out. Again, depending on the strength and speed of your computer and your graphics card and all that stuff. So in just a moment here, it'll have rendered out this image. Slowly but surely. It's nice though that at least it shows you kind of a preview bar of how how far progress wise it's going. We're getting close to halfway. And the more 
detailed your light cap is, the more uh, light you have in the scene, the um, more high poly your figure is, the more objects you have in the scene, all these things kind of uh, make this render take longer or shorter. Well, we're getting close now. Should finish up pretty, pretty soon. There we go. So this is your final render. And you're like, hey, James, the thing's not color. I'm going to get to that. Hold on a second. So without moving anything or touching anything, you're going to go under Render and go to BPR Render Pass and click on Shaded right here. This allows you to save a shaded render. So it's saving it as a Photoshop file. It's got some other options, but I think Photoshop's best. So you save it where you want to save it for that render. And this is very, very, very important. Do not click anywhere on this screen whatsoever. We're going to do one more step to make it easier to color this in Photoshop. Over here on Subtool, without clicking anywhere on the main part of the screen, just under Subtool, you're going to make sure you're selected on your figure itself, and then you're going to use this little eyeball here to turn off both of the planes. That way, the only thing showing on screen is your shark or your figure. Still not touching anything, not adjusting the angle whatsoever, go ahead and hit BPR again to render this, and that's a lot faster. And then under Render, you're going to click Mask. What this is, is it's a mask for the figure itself, and I'll show you in the next video why that's so important and great to use. So then you save that as well under a similar name, but maybe put mask at the end and save it. That's going to allow you to color the figure a lot faster. So that's how you render out something nice. My next video will cover how to actually color the figure um, and get a final nice render for your, for your figurine. Thanks for watching.